really continues uh, with International Relations Minister Naledi Pando presenting the country's statement. Uh, let's uh, cross there live now. ...fundamentally changing their lives. Mr. President, this debate holds special significance for South Africa as it coincides with the 25th anniversary of South Africa's freedom and democracy. Our anniversary is due in large measure to the solidarity we enjoyed from most UN member states. And it is because of this history that South Africa is also vested in the ideal of a robust and coherent United Nations, as it is this organization that has the ability to ensure that all who yearn for freedom achieve it. We know from our experience and history that it will only be through the determined efforts of the UN family that freedom for the people of Palestine can be achieved and only through the UN family that the people of Sahrawi can enjoy freedom. As early as 1946, shortly after the creation of the United Nations, the issue of apartheid South Africa's discriminatory policies was included as an agenda item in the first session of the UN General Assembly. It was therefore with no great surprise that a democratic South Africa eagerly pursued its new international role and enthusiastically took up its responsibilities as an active member of the United Nations. We have sought to participate in all aspects of the UN, including by serving in its principal organs. The principles that motivate our action derive from a firm belief in multilateralism, especially a global governance system that is fair, equitable, and representative. The promotion of peace and security through global disarmament, the settlement of disputes peacefully, and the promotion of good governance, the promotion of human rights, as well as the fight against poverty through the provision of sustainable development. We strongly believe that a purpose, purposive system of multilateralism is necessary to deal with the global challenges that confront us. We are all interdependent in an ever globalizing world and we can ill afford the pursuit of narrow self-interests. Today, South Africa is able to partner with the United Nations in addressing the injustice and imbalances that are a legacy of our past. As government and civil society in South Africa, we respect and act on the decisions of the United Nations. This includes actions in response to the 2015 Sustainable Development Goals which are a transformative global development agenda. South Africa's National Development Plan is the policy we've adopted to execute our commitment to achieve the SDGs. Our plan complements our efforts to support peace, development and security on our continent and the aspiration of our African Union's Agenda 2063. We believe that in order to achieve these goals, all member states should establish partnerships primarily with the private sector and civil society organizations to ensure a shared joint commitment aimed at realizing a world free of poverty and underdevelopment. Mr. President, one of the biggest obstacles to building a world free from poverty and inequality is intolerance. This includes intolerance of other nations, intolerance of our fellow human beings, as well as inadequate care for the natural environment that sustains us all. Intolerance is exhibited most gruesomely by the evidence of gender-based violence and exclusion of women from many sectors in society. Our country, South Africa, is taking urgent steps 
to address the scar of gender-based violence. All of us need to act urgently to ensure that we all enjoy full access to human rights and that all our citizens, particularly women, enjoy bodily security. We also face an existential threat due to our intolerance, disrespect, and veritable violence that we inflict on the planet, which we all depend on. This organization, however, Mr. President, is a manifestation of the rejection of intolerance. It was created in the aftermath of a de devastating world war as a global forum where nations of the world can address differences and work together for the common good of all people. Our annual gathering here is this, in this assembly hall should provide us an opportunity to recommit to these important values. I firmly believe that we are all here because we are committed to the idea of multilateral solutions to the world's problems, which draws on strength through diversity. Diversity of perspective, born from differences in upbringing and culture. By being here, therefore, we recognize that we need each other and we need to work together. We must therefore use this opportunity to rally against intolerance of any kind so that nations can live in peace and respect each other, irrespective of nationality, religion, ethnic or social origin, gender, or any other status. It is through our differences that we should find strength and not division. Mr. President, our country, South Africa, has unfortunately not been immune from evidence of intolerance and division in some parts of our nation. The incidents of violence and looting that erupted in parts of our provinces of Gauteng and KwaZulu-Natal were regrettable and shameful for a nation with such a proud history of struggle and international solidarity support. The government of South Africa strongly condemned these tragic actions and is working hard at ensuring we address the security lapses and intolerance that led to this violence. We are working tirelessly to tackle crime and lawlessness and to ensure that the arrested criminals face the full might of the law. We are also committed to addressing the inadequacy of our immigration administration in order to curb illegal migration and to make sure everyone who comes to South Africa is documented and safe. We plan to work with all countries of the continent to ensure that we implement our development strategies and use them to create increased economic opportunities for all our people so that we diminish feelings of resentment and antipathy. Working with civil society, we will build bridges that allow all who live in South Africa to reach out to each other to build bonds of friendship and pan-Africanism. Mr. President, I am pleased that I can honestly confirm to this important global body that South Africa has an unwavering commitment to our continent, Africa. We have made dedicated efforts to contribute positively in support of peace and development on our continent, and we will continue these efforts even as we work to address the inadequacies I have referred to. Our country, South Africa, has enjoyed democracy for 25 years. And in that time, the leaders and the people of South Africa have consistently acknowledged the immeasurable contribution the people of Africa rendered in support of the struggle against apartheid. Our neighboring states in particular and the rest of the countries in Africa made great sacrifices in support of the liberation movements and the oppressed citizens of South Africa. We wish to reiterate that South Africa does not condone any forms of racism, 
racial discrimination, xenophobia, and related intolerances. In fact, South Africa has embraced millions of migrants and refugees from all over the continent of Africa, and the majority of our people have warmly embraced their brothers and sisters from the continent. We are determined to ensure that this becomes a national embrace and not one limited to some communities. Mr. President, it is an honor for us to address the General Assembly in this, the first year of the Nelson Mandela Decade for Peace, which this Assembly agreed to last year as running from 2019 to 2028. This is a decade in which we have been called upon to intensify our efforts to pursue international peace and security, development, and human rights. South Africa thus commits to use the Nelson Mandela Decade for Peace to promote the strengthening of multilateralism and diplomacy as effective tools for addressing the challenges facing the world today. We cannot decisively deal with the threats of poverty unless we transform the current structure of the global economy, which continues to perpetuate divisions between the global north and the global south. Whilst a few enjoy the benefits of globalization, the majority of the people of the world have not reaped its benefits. It is necessary for us all to work together and spare no effort in addressing the challenges brought by the impact of globalization and the untransformed structure of the global economy. Mr. President, the issues of global peace and security continue to be one of our foremost priorities within this United Nations family. In that regard, we welcome the United Nations efforts to address the plethora of challenges to peace and security, which serve as a major obstacle to our efforts of development on the continent. We are currently serving as a member of the United Nations Security Council. The theme for our term is continuing the legacy, working for a just and peaceful world. This is the embodiment of the legacy of Nelson Mandela and furthers the objective of silencing the guns on the African continent by 2020. We are using our tenure to promote the maintenance of international peace and security and advocate for peaceful settlement of disputes and inclusive dialogue. We continue to encourage closer cooperation between the Security Council and other regional and sub-regional organizations, particularly our African Union. We further emphasize the role of women in the resolution of conflict. We argue for a gender perspective to be mainstreamed into all Security Council resolutions in line with Security Council Resolution 1325 on Women, Peace, and Security, which was adopted at the initiative of our neighbor, Namibia. Despite the commitments in this resolution, women remain excluded within peace processes, including in the drafting of peace agreements and their involvement in United Nations peacekeeping is limited. We need to ensure that women are fully part of peace building processes and are part of institutions established once conflict has been eradicated. In October, we will preside over the Security Council's debate on the subject. The emphasis of the debate should be to ensure implementation of the commitments we have made to fully implement the Women, Peace, and Security Agenda. As we've consistently stated, South Africa is supportive of this global institution and a rules-based multilateral system. But we believe the United Nations remains hamstrung by the fact that the organization continues to have structures that are undemocratic and anachronistic. We remain gravely concerned that 74 years after founding of the United Nations, 
Key decisions on peace and security are de facto the domain of only five countries. 20 years of discussions of reform of the Security Council have yielded no movement towards a more representative and inclusive body. We believe the time has come for the broader membership to heed the overwhelming call for Africa to obtain at least two permanent seats with all the prerogatives of permanent membership, as well as for the five non-permanent seats as embodied in the common African position adopted as the Ezeluini consensus. In this regard, we have to see an invigoration of negotiations on reform at the intergovernmental negotiations, including by ensuring we move to text-based negotiations. Chairperson, our continent, Africa, has reached an important milestone with the adoption and launch of the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement. The agreement entered into force on the 30th of May this year, and we are confident that it will unleash Africa's economic potential and consolidate its position as a new frontier of economic growth and development. It is a flagship initiative of the AU's Agenda 2063, and the trade opportunities it creates must be taken up by all member states and our partners. We are ready to engage in active deliberations on this bold step. We wish to stress that Africa's development cannot be addressed without responding to illicit financial flows. We believe that these are debilitating on our efforts to generate sufficient domestic resources to support our development. We propose that we work together as the international community to establish an intergovernmental framework that will have a universal political mandate which will serve as a basis to address these illicit flows, including speeding up the return of assets. Mr. President, the international community stands at a unique crossroads where the shifting international order has the ability to shape international peace and security for decades to come. It is thus a great disappointment that we witness the demise of the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty in August. Furthermore, in the prevailing international climate, successes in the field of disarmament, particularly nuclear disarmament, are few and far between. The threats posed by these weapons are too great for the international community to ignore. We believe that only the complete, transparent, verifiable, and irreversible dismantlement of such weapons and their means of delivery can prevent their use in an escalating conflict. Mr. President, we feel ashamed that for over 70 years, the people of Palestine have lived under occupation. In the last year, this occupation has worsened with continued illegal settlement activity and further insecurity for the peoples of Palestine and Israel. As the international community, we must urge for a negotiated settlement to this long-standing conflict. The United Nations must also remain seized with the issue of Western Sahara for the benefit of her people and for Africa's aspirations of a truly free Africa with no country under colonial and imperial control. We also reiterate our steadfast solidarity with the government and people of Cuba while condemning the continuation of unilateral sanctions against Cuba and against Zimbabwe. Mr. President, I wish to conclude by affirming that South Africa stands ready to work with all member states to promote the United Nations and its objectives of promoting international peace and security, development and human rights enjoyed by all, so that finally we can reach a point 
where all people in our world enjoy freedom, development, and democracy. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the Minister of International Cooperation of South Africa for her statement. And I now have the honor to, to invite the Minister, the, His Excellency Peter David, Minister for Foreign Affairs and Labor of Grenada. Honorable Minister. All right. Uh, the